Welcome to My Worst Date. I'm Cassie. I'm Keegan. I'm Christina. Okay, what do we got to talk about today, we you guys? How so much to talk about? <laughs> I'm furious. I am heated. Okay. I am livid because this is the kind of shit that I bought into in my 20s. I think it's very Ugh. destructive. I feel like we have to talk about it. I um, was ready to laugh because I thought you were going to bring up something funny and now I know where you're going and I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> prepare yourselves to get hot." No, be Okay. So if you haven't seen Kim Kardashian's in Hot Water because she basically says that women don't want to fucking work hard mm-hmm. these days and that like same 24 hours. Yeah. Basically pushing that fucking bullshit mm-hmm. of we all have the same 24 hours in a day and like we could all be self-made billionaires if we just worked hard. But according to Kim Kardashian, we just don't work hard. And I'm fucking so upset about she that kind of mindset. She literally said the words... It yeah. just people don't want to work these days. People just don't want to work these days. Hi, hey, Grandma. That's what she said. I was Listen. just like, "Are you serious?" Because everyone that I know is perpetually exhausted, on right. the verge of burnout, doing multiple things. Like right. everyone Everything. I know is working jobs and side hustles. Yep. Like, and a lot of people are still barely getting by. So yeah. shut up! Shut up! Shut up! First and foremost. Um, if you are lucky enough to have gotten dealt the hand of cards, <laughs> right. that you get to be born in Beverly fucking Hills, California yeah. to a lawyer, to a rich and famous, successful lawyer. Yep. And so that's the, the hand that yep. you're starting with. Yep. And then you get to trade all these different cards for more clout, more cash, whatever. You don't get to fucking tell people that didn't get dealt that same hand of cards that they aren't working hard. That's right. Let me tell you what. You don't know what it is to work a fucking double like no. on Mother's Day. No. no. <laughs> like a brunch shift. <laughs> with the fucking Preach. worst. You don't know what it is to work retail, to be a roofer, construction. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, any any of these things. You don't get to tell people that they aren't working hard when you're already starting off on a level that most people will never, ever, ever get to experience. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally infuriating. Yeah. And it's also just like you're not having to experience the stress that everyone else has to go through in terms of like, where, how am I going to get insurance? How am I going to, you know, pay all of my bills and my rent? (sighs) Like, you know, you're not having to experience those things and you get to delegate tasks to other people who you can afford. You have the privilege to be able to afford to pay, to watch your children, to pay your bills, to handle your finances. I really wonder what those, what her staff thinks of those comments. I'd be real fucking interested to talk to those people. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I was thinking the other day as I was, you know, WebMDing some symptoms of mine, <laughs> thinking about how I found something I'm pretty sure tracks to some of the things I've been dealing with. And I'm like, well, there's no real cure for that. So maybe I just try these things instead of actually having it diagnosed and paying a doctor to give oh, me yeah. a treat a diagnosis of something that actually doesn't have a cure for it. So I'm just going to have to treat anyway. And so I might as well just try those treatments. I'm like, these are the things that the real world has to deal with. Right. The 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 reality of real American life oh, is yeah. having to think about can I afford to even see a doctor and pay my very small probable copay or whatever and just thinking about like what effects that may have on the rest of my my life and i just it's just a it's such a privileged yeah and i feel like i come from a privileged place already like i feel like i'm pretty privileged in in the way that my life is i i you know i say i do a lot but the things i get to do i have a job that is is fantastic i that i like doing i have i get to go to school I, I I mean that's a pretty privileged place to come from. The the amount of things that I do, I'm actually privileged to be able to do to have this podcast. That's yeah, a privilege. But you're coming but, from a place of gratitude versus right. like be like, bitch, you should be fucking grateful every single fucking day that's right. with the the thing and you don't get to tell other people that's right. 
how what their situation is and that they they could just fix it by well, bootstrap you're, you're also selling a lie yeah. like yeah. you're, you're selling lie. a lie that like I if you just ass. do xyz you can live the same life as me no, which is can't. just absolutely not the case for anyone 99.9 percent of people are not yep. going to be able to work their way to that level of success um without some kind of leg up in the way that you know she was born into this thing you know like she was born into that sphere already and yes you can say like oh i started out organizing closets but you were organizing closets for paris fucking hilton right right? Right. like yeah and you were hanging out with paris hilton yeah you know like you you already had that adjacent that's the thing too it's it's just like anything and i think probably uh, we we get this in a very la way which is that LA is one of those towns where like you you you're never going to everything you're going to get is because of who you know it's not yes. what you know it's who you know in this right. town and that's and it's not even really how talented you are no it really like, has and you yes i think that they're good business they've made good business decisions oh, that have sure. helped them to grow chris you jenner know? is a fucking genius man right i don't want to like, take anything away from from that because i'm like yeah you did make choices that help your business yeah. and yeah. got you to the place that you are but to say that like everyone else would be able to do the exact same is not not even just close not to even reality close to reality yeah. yeah and yeah man i stay being on the fence with with kim kardashian because i'm like you she's done a lot of you know using her platform to advocate for um emancipating people from prison mm-hmm. yeah and, and stuff like that but and I think that's awesome. I think that's great. But I'm also like, you are in close contact then with people who, right. who have not had a privileged life. Right. And that means so you're, how you're are not you so tone deaf. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So then it makes me question those moments where I do actually look at her and say, look at her using this platform for good. It makes me think that all of her motives are mm. ulterior because I'm like, if you wow actually True. were in that and empathetic to these situations there's no way that something like that would have come out your mouth and you know honestly like at this point knowing what we know now about instagram and how toxic it is to um women and teen girls and everything and the immense amount of influence that they've had within that platform i just i'm like i'm i'm at the point like wash my hands yeah like, it was really infuriating to hear courtney Kardashian so true she's over there like yes anding all of Mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian's comments and I'm like bitch please I used to girl I used to watch keeping up with the Kardashians you complained about having to work you were an you were an icon for setting work boundaries that's something I appreciated she was like I'm fucking leaving at four I don't want to work I don't have to so I'm getting the fuck out of here and I'm like okay yeah like you know but just own that then like just own it like you have the privilege to be able to say like no thanks not today right for you i wish i could but then don't like co-sign what That's kim kardashian right. is saying about people not working hard enough like you don't even want to be working Wait, stop right, it right no and it, it, i guess it kind of like hits too at this moment where like i'm seeing a lot of things about like people getting ready to go back into oh, the sh- office ugh. don't even get me started on how i feel about that i'm like we have had two years of this amazing reintegration mm-hmm. of work life balance where mm-hmm. I'm like, I can do a load of laundry whilst sending out outreach emails. Like you're not having to travel an hour That's right. to mm-hmm. and from work, adding to an already long work day. Yeah. And I'm like, Americans, we are already like working most of the time, like eight to six, you know, because we don't even get that lunch mm-hmm. hour. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hard to see a company make record numbers and then say, that we need to become productive and back in the office. It's again. about it's not about like, productivity. It's about yeah. control. Like that's what it it's about. And Bingo. you know, I was just reading about this, and something like sixty something percent of people um, who were surveyed in Canada and in the United States said that if their jobs required them to go back full time, they'd look for a new job. And yeah. I'm among those people. I I will not go back to the office full time. No, I've had this taste now. <laughs> I am fully Freedom. fucking feral. Yeah, now. like I I can see. <laughs> A wild cat. I can see going back a, a couple of days a week. Like I'm like, sure. okay, get that face to face interaction with you know one to two days is really where I'm at. It's fine, yeah, because most meetings and stuff are going to have to be done over Zoom anyway. Yeah, unless you go back, everyone full time, which 
we're not going to do. People will leave. People will walk. Yeah. I think that they're underestimating the number of people who will leave their jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, good for it. us. Yeah. <laughs> it's honestly. Time. It's time that we like set some boundaries. I, you know, like that's oh workers my- rights. There's a real yeah. like workers rights um, movement happening right yeah. now. And really realizing that like we have more power than we thought yeah. we did we can we can decide to say if we all do it if we all just say no then they yeah. can't do it you can't, like yeah you can't make me <laughs> this wheel doesn't run without us. like this machine doesn't run without us so keep thank, that in mind everybody thank you honestly, for coming to my corner yeah yeah honestly at gas prices right uh, yeah. now stop say, it and, and honestly businesses save your money just get rid of that building you know, and you know what? Those buildings that will you're so afraid of being sitting empty. I know Affordable a lot of people. housing. Hey, you said it. Oh my Words gosh. right out of my fucking mouth. Like, oh honestly. My God. All right, comrade. So what else is going on? <laughs> Oh no! I know. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean it to turn into like how I would fix the world. (laughs) Wow. Oh my goodness. What Uh, else is going on? Well, didn't you go see the Batman? I did. I did. Um, listen. Um, (laughs) I I have a lot of a lot of thoughts about it. Um, first of all, I did not know it was supposed to be like teenage Batman or like he's older than me. Like I. Dude, like the Robert vibes. Pattinson is like mid thirties. What's going on? He had constant like <laughs> hair in his face, oh, guy emo liner, Batman. emo mm, Batman, sexy okay. all the way. Wait, okay. I love to see it. Yeah, no, it was. But like, is he putting on his eyeliner before he? It's all just sad the cure songs. Or? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, so he's in he's in the Batman costume or mm-hmm. outfit, whatever, and um. He has like grease paint or whatever around his eyes so that that whole area that's sure. cut out is also black around his eyes. So he but is he's putting on makeup before he leaves the house. Yes. Okay. Yes, he is. I love to see that. I love to see that he's like, and when the city takes- of Gotham needs me. And he goes to the bathroom and like. <laughs> when he takes the Batman cowl off, like, so there's like <laughs> his. Oh, man. Like the crow. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm uh, turned man, on already. Yeah, I am not going to lie. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Like a man with, with a black uh, eye makeup. Dude, is hot. the chemistry between him and Zoe Kravitz, though, is okay. is pretty. I've seen them in interviews, and I feel like that chemistry transfers over. Yeah. Like, I'm like, if, if you haven't, you should. You know, I'm like, <laughs> if, if you haven't banged it out, I feel like you really should. I they spoiler Channing Tatum, alert. by the way, is like, wait, no, what? no, wait, excuse me. No. <laughs> Spoiler alert, they do like kiss in the movie, but I definitely wanted, I wanted more. This is, okay. Yeah. So Daily Zeitgeist literally just talked about this. So credit where credit's due, mm-hmm. but movies are not horny anymore. Yes. Yeah. That, was a, that was a Janelle Monique take. Uh, I love her. I love her. She's a frequent guest on that show and like a movie expert. And I agree. I was just watching and this movie is not good, but it was on Netflix and I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it. I was just watching In the Cut, which is a movie. It's like when Meg Ryan decided that she was going to be edgy. Oh, uh, and no. it's like a thriller with like her and Mark Ruffalo. And you do see like I, I, she shows her boobs in that movie. Um, it's like a lot of sex, a lot of takes notes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see Mark Ruffalo go down on Meg Ryan. Okay, so if that's something shit. you're interested in. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I love there you Mark go. Ruffalo. Oh, love Mark Ruffalo. The movie is not good. However, it is horny. It is very, very horny. And I feel like movies in the 90s were so horny. Dude, speaking of other wow. podcasts, how did this get made? They've done a couple of like, what do they do? They did this one called Jade, where I was like, first of all, I can't even believe this is a Exists. fucking real movie because they were describing some like down ass triple x shit that yes. i'm like i can't remember the last time i've seen some real raunch yeah no like movies aren't made like that anymore no. like they are not like sexy like that anymore and this the, movie like the batman i want all fucking, of the I advertising want fucking in marvel movies okay <laughs> i said it you heard right. it first okay. i mean listen i am not gonna say no to that i wanted mark I'm ruffalo ready. and scarlett johansson to bang it out smash bang it out smash so that's Hulk one smash yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay. Well, Woo. are you guys ready to take a break? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, no. I, it's it's weird though, isn't it? What do you attribute that to? Why do you think that is? I really I don't think know. Nobody is actually horny anymore. Like to be <laughs> honest with you, I think IRL. Like I just think that we have been trapped inside with each other for too long. 
I just think that we're all depressed. Yeah. So nobody's Here's, actually horny. I am the opposite of that. I get okay, horny, Brad. hornier <laughs> wow. the more depressed I am. I think if I'm... What? Whoa, yeah. Damn. Yeah. It's that self-esteem out and you're just like, I got to fucking... <laughs> I got to oh. bang it out. I got to <laughs> listen. We, I ju- Oh my God, that's so funny because I just watched um, a stand-up. Uh, what's her name? Oh, shoot. Tomlinson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking hilarious. I think she's so funny. Taylor. Taylor Tomlinson. Yeah. Oh, and I she seen that. just talked about like how like fixing her depression. Now she's like, I can't tell if I'm just not horny because of the drugs or if I just have the higher self-esteem. <laughs> and I'm like, that is such a real. <laughs> I feel that in my bones. That is so funny. <laughs> oh, no. But yeah, no, I, I, I am super horny, been horny for a few years and I'm, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing horny stuff. No, no, nothing. No, horny. it is weird. It is weird because I feel like when we do our tainted love movies for Patreon, I feel like we've done quite a few set in the 80s and 90s mm-hmm. that are real, like sexy, sexy, like sexy. thriller, kind thriller. Of thing. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. those erotic thrillers that are they like do very. Not make those anymore. There is not an erotic no. thriller to be found Mm-mm. anymore. And I feel like you have to go to like maybe tv shows like outlander i remember season one of outlander being a little bit spicy yes, but that it was, was kind of yeah that was that's kind of it Trigger bridgerton warning. is all the, okay that was a little but bit but it, then, it teases it's it. like yeah it's, it's not, not and that yeet off <laughs> that, wow right on the sheets yeets on the sheets it's, <laughs> that's actually the name of the show now <laughs> uh, bridgerton, you guys watch the- <laughs> yeets on the sheets <laughs> Oh, y'all been watching that Eats on the Sheets? Yeah, oh, like what a God. weird premise for a show. It was just like him trying not to That was a major inside. plot, plot point. point. So major. Too major, if yeah. I'm being honest. The number of times we saw him grunt into a sheet was... Uh, <laughs> I mean, like he... It was almost as though his... His yeet was like <laughs> propelled by the amount of cum coming out of him. He was like, he was so off of her. It was <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> but am I watching season two? Oh, Absolutely. hell yeah. Oh, can't <laughs> wait. I'm there. Dude, I'm in. they started that dating show that's like based on that. Oh, yeah. I, I've meant to check it out. I haven't checked it we out. I saw a trailer soon. for it. And Chris was like, absolutely not. And I was like, oh, I will be watching oh, that. A yeah, uh, hundred. Uh, I uh, will be watching try that. Try and stop me. He's like, I am so, he's like, I'm so embarrassed for you. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I get, get in or get out. I don't care. <laughs> no, we got two TVs. I don't know what you're talking about. That's damn right. That's, That's right. Exactly right. No, I'm watching it too. So yeah, yeah we'll, we'll keep notes. <sighs> oh, well, I do have to say that this episode comes out a day before St. Patrick's Day. So okay. I was actually thinking um, of hot Irish people that we could fmk there are a lot of hot okay. irish people mm-hmm. uh i'm thinking because i know christina i know we've talked about this i'm i'm gonna let you have killian murphy oh yeah i'm gonna let you have killian uh, Murphy, even though like oof, man anytime i see a still from peaky blinders there's something about that character that specifically specific mm. character it's it's the clothing he wears yeah those, and the intense the glasses. layers he's got it's those glasses so, too right like that he wears sometimes oh gosh i don't know if he wears glasses Isn't that on that peaky show? blinders the, the little round ones isn't that right I don't know if he wears glasses I don't on think that so. show, but his intensity on that show mm. is mm-hmm. wow. Um, so I figured you would pick Killian Murphy. So yeah. I am going to go with Jamie Dornan. Now oh, listen, okay. I do not like speaking of sexy movies, horny movies. I did not like um, Fifty Shades. I didn't mm. like. I noped out of the book like halfway through it, and then I saw maybe the first movie, and it's just it wasn't for me. But the fall, the fall. I was just gonna say, Oof. oh, he did wear glasses. Oh, nice. Oh. Ooh, sorry, um, I was just like, I, am I crazy? Did I not see that? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think he wears them very often on the show. But yeah. no, it's like obviously from like yeah, a- but hot. Um, but Jamie Dornan in yes. the fall. That what does is that one say of about us? Guilty. Because he is. And so is Killian Murphy and Peaky Blinders. Like they are not nice men. Like no. they are bad, bad the men. the fall is like him and Jillian Anderson. Oh, oh my God. That Ooh. is. Yes. It was deeply upsetting to me how mm. hot, hot I found him in that show. I was just like, there is something very wrong with me because he is a serial killer in <laughs> yes. that show. Yes, Wait, spoiler is. alert. Jesus. I, I mean, you it. learn, you learn it immediately. <laughs> yeah. Um, episode one. Yeah. But like, <laughs> y- yes. Um, 
going to go with him because yeah. I, objectively a very attractive man. Yeah. I just very attractive. saw him in the movie Belfast. Oh, uh, yeah. which yeah. was, it was pretty, pretty cute. It's like him and the, the main chick from Outlander yeah. are in it. It's pretty, it's pretty cute. It's black, black, black and white. And white. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was, he was good in that and good looking as well. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, yeah, wow. he's a good looking dude. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to, I was torn. I had a couple in mind, but I'm going Chris O'Dowd. Aww. And I am because I just, I think he's so cute. I and think he's, he's cute so too. funny. He's too. so funny. I he love seems him. nice. Like genuinely yeah. like sweet. He is, he is my kind of humor too. Yeah. Like him in Bridesmaids. I'm like that kind of <laughs> dorky humor. He's so cute in he's Bridesmaids. so cute. Yeah. Like just like adorable. Like the yeah. kind of guy, like if I met, that guy we'd be friends yeah oh we'd probably fuck yeah let's be wrong (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's my type for sure this one's hard i think mine's pretty i know i know what i'm gonna do i think yeah i don't i i need to marinate on it yeah you go first you You go go first first and show your work yes Ah! (laughs) make your case (laughs) well i'm marrying chris o'dowd yeah yeah, i mean that's that's that is for me this is the most it Mm -hmm. tracks like he is funny he's good looking he kind of comes you know, like you get like he's the kind of funny he is a smart funny oh yeah he reminds me the most of chris so that matt yeah that, that tracks for me um this is where it becomes difficult yep. yeah like who do you fuck <sighs> i gotta say it yeah no don't you dare jamie dornan oh okay gosh i thought you were gonna say that you didn't think Sorry. killian murphy was hot is that what is that what you're about to say to me to my face. I am going to fuck Jamie Dornan. And here's why. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at the wall now. Cassie is I, looking at the wall. And she can't face us. <laughs> I am going to. I'm going to fuck Jamie Dornan. Here's why. Um, <laughs> he's dead sexy. And um, I. Hot take. I did like Fifty Shades. But there I read the books. And oh, I well, that's okay. Him, and yeah. Lots of people liked it. He's pretty fucking sexy. There's something yeah. really yeah. sexy because he's like dark, right? There's a kind of bit of mystery. And you haven't him. seen The Fall? I haven't. You have got to watch that show. Okay, I'm going to. Yeah, it's not it's not too scary for you. No, no I'm I think no, I like, like stuff it. like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I I'm going to pass on Killian Murphy. Yeah. Okay, we can leave it at that. I okay. feel like more for me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right? All right, I think I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, okay. Y'all are gonna just kill Chris Dow- O'Dowd just for the hell of it now. Aren't I you? I'm going to marry Killian Murphy. Is there something like a smoky, old fashioned yeah. mm. flavor mm-hmm. to him? There's something like mysterious. Mysterious. Yeah. There's something very like I I don't know. I just I feel like long conversations, sipping scotch, yeah. like, with him, and I feel like. Yeah, I feel like it would be a very spicy, very fun marriage. So, I mean, I would be making it spicy. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, that's all I can say uh, comfortably mm-hmm. on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I your mind is him. going places it and is. I see it. it is. I see, I see it, it all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm marrying Killian Murphy. And then I got to say, if it's just a one night stand, I, I got to go for Jamie Dornan. Yeah. 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 Just, Woo-wee! Okay. Look. <laughs> you skipped the Chris Listen. O'Dowd entirely. You're like, I'm not going to say it. No. Listen. No, I won't say it because I, I do believe, should I marry Chris O'Dowd? That's absolutely. Here's where we're at. Yes. This is where we're yes, at. Yes, that's exactly I'm right. sorry. I'm making the bad decision. Yes. Yeah. We said we were making better decisions in 2022. Yeah. We here, lied. Here I am. Uh, because should I marry Chris O'Dowd? Obviously, yeah. he is the obvious choice. That is a fun marriage. That yeah. man is gonna love you. It's like, a stable marriage. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, fun. You're at barbecues. Yes. You're have the oh god, best time. yeah, you will have the best time. Do I know that I'm probably making a mistake by also wanting to marry Killian Murphy? Yes, but <laughs> are you the couple that gets invited to all the the parties? Yeah. Yes. Oh, um, because your husband's too hot, or because he's a really good time. <laughs> I, I see what you're doing, Cassie. I understand. I understand that the better choice is to marry Chris O'Dowd. However, there is something I don't know. You if gotta it's do what the, you gotta I do. I don't know if it's the mystery of it where I'm like, 
you don't know exactly what you're getting and you get to like peel back those layers like an mm-hmm. onion. But what like, if what's underneath is like fart humor? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what if Killian Murphy loves like Dutch oven you at night and just laughs like so hard? I would never Wait, be. Did I marry the wrong person? I would <laughs> never be more disappointed. <laughs> The yes. level of disappointment oh, no. for me Dutch oven. if I married Killian Murphy and that's who he was. And he's just like somebody that just <laughs> loves like fart. Don't do this to me. He, quotes, he only quotes like Talladega Night. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh Why are God. you both determined to ruin this fantasy for me? Let me have this. Oh Let me God. have this. His favorite movie is step brother yeah all he quotes did we you. just become best friends <laughs> yep. yep oh god <laughs> went to the garage and do karate yep i'm choosing to believe that's not who he is okay but he says it with an irish accent so if that okay makes you feel well better, it, huh? does. Mm-hmm. it does it does it makes me feel a lot better <laughs> actually <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to do it so bad but i'm not but gonna fuck my ruin this by my is, bad irish accent <laughs> <laughs> would his farts be in an irish accent too <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm very distressed by the conversation. <laughs> oh, it sounds like I don't know. I feel like uh-huh. it's, it's a pretty thing. Like, yeah, I I love an Irish accent, so I feel like that would actually improve a fart. And they smell like was. Irish Spring. <laughs> We lose We're off literally the rails. all of our fucking Irish listeners. Oh no! Mar- our apologies. Oh. We love. Um. Anyways. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> For the record, <gasps> I I was not participating in that. In like, that. Uh, this is Keegan, and I would like to <laughs> <laughs> formally announce that I was not my. Uh, um. Okay. <laughs> we're we're back on. We're back on. Yep. I I am going to marry Kelly and Murphy. I just I feel like there is. I feel like sex with him too is going to be one of those like he's like got strong skinny guy energy. Oh you yeah, you know. Oh uh, yeah. So yes, I am also going to have a one night stand with Jamie Dornan because I just think that I, there, there, he's a different kind of intensity that I don't right. want to be married to. Like, right. I don't want to be married to that kind of intensity. Exactly. It's different. I can't yes. explain exactly how it's different, but it is. And. uh I would like it for one evening, though, please. So that's mm-hmm. that's what I'm gonna do. And Chris O'Dowd, I love him. Like if if we were fuck Mary friending, hundred oh, yeah. percent. Like he seems like yeah. so much fun. I want to go to an amusement park with Chris O'Dowd. Like yeah. that seems like a great time. Yeah, I'm gonna have game night with him. I'm yeah, gonna, I want to like. Yeah, he's gonna make you laugh for real. For real. Yeah. 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 So we're having the okay. best time. Jesus Christ! Wow, what a that journey was a that journey. was. <laughs> incredible well, we do have a new patron this we week. do i also want to shout out uh d buschetta buschetta i'm not sure how to pronounce your last name but you have been an og yes uh, absolutely from the beginning uh worsty and you just upped your pledge and we can't tell you how like grateful we are for you you know it's just you're one of those people one of those listeners ride or die ride or die and we so appreciate you so i wanted to make sure that we gave you another shout out on this show just to let you know how much we really do genuinely love and appreciate you we also have a new patron allison mongini i hope i'm pronouncing your last name right but Thank you so, so much for joining us on Patreon. We love to have you, love to see you. If you have any suggestions for Fuck, Mary Kills, Would You Rather, Tainted Love Movies, uh, we would love to hear them. So welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys want to take five and we'll come back with stories? Yeah. Sounds good. And we're back. Okay. Kick us off with stories, Christina. Okay. I got this one from Reddit. They say, we were out having a good time, about to have some dinner. I made some comment about a catapult. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He he literally stopped in his tracks, asked exactly what I meant. (laughs) Did I mean a catapult or did I in fact mean a trebuchet? What? Oh, Oh, no. Listen. (laughs) Dude, I thought he was like, I'm in. Tell me everything. I, I, okay. Proceed. Sorry. Cue 
a very lengthy lecture mm. on the difference between all kinds of medieval siege weaponry. I, I don't, oh. I don't care. I don't care. Oh no! While he repeatedly called me and most other people idiots. Oh my oh, god! Okay. Oh my god! Okay. Like just pussy dry right up. Like yep. we're not immediately. Immediately no. Like if you're gonna mansplain medieval weaponry to me, as if that's a thing that all of us should know or use in our daily lives. I got a lot of shit going on. Okay, listen, Keegan is. <laughs> Triggered. I just that kind of thing makes me so mad. G- belittling I'm anyone. Sorry, do you mean a catapult or a trebuchet? Excuse me, a trebuchet. I just I don't know why I'm so triggered by that. <laughs> like, I'm just like, how dare you call me stupid for something that most people wouldn't actively need to know or care right. about? Exactly. All. Like you're yeah. a hobbyist about like, a, like fucking medieval. <laughs> Listen, Jesus. so one of my favorite memories of my dad is like once he retired, he would get into like really weird shit. And so like off the cuff one day on the phone with him, he mentioned that he had made a trebuchet uh, <laughs> for when <laughs> like a very large like it was like 12 feet tall. <gasps> oh, my a huge trebuchet. So he had made it. And then he's like, I'm, I'm waiting for you guys to come and visit so we can play with I the I love it. Wait. <laughs> like, here's the Hilarious. thing. I actually think if you're really into something obscure like that, I think that's really cool. Like, I, I don't have, expect the world to know. Right. I have lots of really weird. I go down really weird rabbit holes where like right. now I have a lot of like random information in my head about a, a topic that other people might not know about. Right. I think that that stuff is awesome. But then like. Talk to me about it. Like, if you're passionate about it, I There's want you a to like difference. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Where you're coming at it from, like, oh my god, catapult. That's so cool. Like, what if it was this? Or you want to have a conversation? Yeah, about Yeah, like, it how big whatever? was it? Oh well, then that means actually. it's a trebuchet and like blah blah blah. And like, and I think that's that kind of passion I enjoy. Correct. It's that when you're trying to like um actually me. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, I hate it. Uh, bad vibes. Bad energy. So during the lecture, our <laughs> starters arrived. And he started using his fork to further illustrate the different kinds Uh -uh. of catapult (laughs) mechanism along with my food, which he was intensely forking up as a projectile demo (laughs) and then eating while he talked. That's hilarious. So I'm sitting there staring in a sort of fascinated horror while being angrily lectured by, uh, by a man eating my dinner. Oh, my God. Thankfully, the flow was interrupted by his phone ringing. He answered. Turned out his grandma had died, <gasps> and he immediately burst into floods and floods of inconsolable oh, no. tears. I had no idea what to do, so I suggested perhaps we should call it a night so he could go and be with his family. Oh. He left, I stayed, and then ate his food. Oh, wow. wow. Took a turn. It oh, really did. <laughs> that is like a worst date. I that... can't imagine. Like, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yikes. 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 Okay. This is also from Reddit. Met online. And when he picked me up, he says, I thought I recognized this address. I live right there. He proceeds to point to a balcony with a clear view of my house and straight into my living room. Already getting murder vibes. I decide not to poke the murdery bear, but to make it through this date and then just never talk to him again. Wrong choice. He takes me to a local upscale upscale pizza joint where he orders himself a pound of wings and eats all of them himself okay let's talk about like listen i fucking love chicken wings yes i'm one of those people i can put the wing in my mouth like you suck it dry like a cartoon character exactly yeah oh and i love it i love a chicken wing since giving up meat i miss i really miss chicken wings yeah like i really do oh and we just got this air fryer too Mm. Okay, so we found it at Costco. It was on sale. Girls, I cannot tell you enough. Get your fucking ass to mm. an air fryer because I know. that thing everyone says makes that. the best fucking chicken wings. Ours came with like a rotisserie Ooh. basket. Oh, oh my god, it was <laughs> so good. Anyways, all that to say, I 
don't think that's the best first date meal. <laughs> no, chicken wings are a very <laughs> difficult first very, date meal. I eat messy. Well, when I ate chicken wings, I ate them with a fork because they're messy. You are of out course. of course. Oh, Sorry. I can't okay. with you. <laughs> no. I Fancy. don't like my lips to be spicy. Okay. Oh, God. Look, it oh. burns. I mean, but that's what makes them bigger. <laughs> <laughs> um. But also, like, ordering a pound of chicken wings and not sharing them, also a, a weird move. And then just, like, looking at someone over a pound of chicken wings, like that, like, a, a, a mountain of chicken wings. Yeah. A having a conversation. Is not that much for chicken I wings, I don't it's think. It's probably, like, at least, like, 12 yeah. chicken wings. Which 15, is actually, like, maybe. that's a lot of that's chicken wings. a lot, wings but it's not, like, in one sitting. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so he is. Chicken wings, not good for first date. No, so, no. Yeah. He orders himself a pound of wings and eats all of them himself while telling me I'd be much more attractive if I was slimmer and that I should come to a spin class with him. Also, the instructor is a babe and his dream woman. Wow. <laughs> well, it's a lot. Well, he well. then... <laughs> It gets worse. He then describes his penis in detail, Ugh. telling me how much I'll love it because the average vagina is only seven inches deep, as if I don't own a vagina and live with and have lived with it for 20 odd years. I actually, I'll, I'll be honest, I do not know the depth of my vagina. I don't either. <laughs> I feel like. I don't either. I think we've <laughs> talked in length about the depth yeah, of we have. my <laughs> vagina, and I don't want to talk about it further, but I do want to say the fuck are you fucking talking about, bro? <laughs> exactly. Like, honestly, dicks are just like vaginas. Everyone's is different. It's different. Christ yeah. on crutches, you dumb motherfucker. Like, also, get fucking bent. This is a first date. You don't God. need to describe you your, your penis You and your chicken wing mouth. Get the fuck just, away from me. Eating chicken wings, describing... And telling me I'm fat. Go, go fucking jump off a cliff, you right. fucking garbage human. Right. right. I am exactly. so fucking mad right yeah. now like i couldn't be oh it gets worse it gets worse he then takes out his phone to show me a variety of sex toys and encourages me to purchase some while also giving me reviews of his favorites along with play-by-plays of his use of them with his ex-girlfriend whoa okay bro. so oh my god hot. you come in real hot you've pulled up your phone there's you're you're making me scroll through pages of sex toys are you paying for these sex toys? And are they being delivered to my house? Because then maybe. <laughs> yes, because we aren't having sex. So sex right. toys might be great. And they're expensive. So they're right. Very they expensive. are very expensive. I actually. I, I hate everything about this. Yeah. I fucking hate. Everything. Yeah, mm. I'm heated. I have never been so relieved as when he dropped me off home. Finally, I couldn't have left the car any faster. And I thought that would be the end of it. Oh, come on. He lives across the street. Fast forward a Psycho. week later. I was sitting on the couch watching Netflix when I get a text from a number I didn't recognize. It says, what are you watching? <gasps> I look out my window and sex toy McChicken Wing <laughs> is oh. sitting on his balcony looking through my window and okay, waving at me. fucking Joe from you. So fucking creepy. In what world would you have thought that like that would be welcome like that that's something that i would no, think that was like funny it, or interesting it is one of my deepest fears i fucking hate people looking in windows do you yeah. know what i mean yes i like ever since i saw like my parents took me to a 24 hour horror film <laughs> festival when yeah. i was six years old yes. because they couldn't get a babysitter and so i saw a lot of things I shouldn't at six years old, yeah. like the reanimator, like yeah. night of the living dead and like <laughs> no. Halloween. And I specifically remember when Jamie Lee Curtis yes. looks out the window and sees Mike Myers looking in the window yep. at her. It's yeah. the most terrifying yep. thing I can think of. And I don't fucking look oh, out God. your window and something is looking at you. At you? Uh-uh. Done. Uh-uh. No. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes just expecting people. And that happening is still scary. Yeah, it's still yes. scary. Yeah, like, goddamn. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Yes. Since moving to this apartment, it's been real rough because oh, yeah. my living room and kitchen windows face the courtyard. Yeah. So I like if I keep them open, then it's like anyone walking through the apartment complex can like look into my apartment. That's but gotta if you be keep rough. Close. It's dark as it's shit. Dark as hell. Like a goddamn den in here. It's gotta <laughs> be rough for your nudist self. Oh, but I know you were. Yeah. It at happened to me the other at day. Heart. It happened to me the other day. I was getting ready to take a, a bath. And so I had like already removed all my clothes. And then I was like, oh, I, I want to go get, get something like a drink or something. From the kitchen. As someone so- who has just been in your bathroom, by the way, you have 30 
like approximately 30 robes hanging on the back <laughs> I know. of the door. So I just want to preface this. I know. I know. <laughs> so many options. There's no reason that I should just be walking around naked. However, I do. So I, you know, I was like, oh, I'm already like prepped for bath time, but like I'm naked and I need to go to the kitchen for something. And I like went into my living room and noticed that my blinds fully open. Oh, fully yeah. open. Like, and then you have to figure out like, do, do I, I still do no. what I was doing? No, or do you I moonwalk your ass right back to your fucking robes. <laughs> yeah, because for a split second there, I really was like, I should go up and like shut my blinds. But then I'm like, I don't want to get my tits like closer to the window <laughs> to like, sh- you know, I would have had to climb on the couch to shut the. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. It's just all jaggy and titties. And you're like, like somebody's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so I did go put a robe on for the curious and, and I shut the window. Mm. Uh, but, but yeah, anyway, the end of this story is that she moved a month, a month later. But, oh so, yeah. Oh, good. You okay. have to. Yeah. At yeah. that point to another country. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, psychopath. Okay. <clears throat> I had a match with a girl on Tantan, a rather popular dating app. Um, I, I thought that that was like a nickname for Tinder and oh, I was like, huh. that's like, like so your pet cute. name for Tinder. Tan-tan. Tan-tan. I, I call it Tan Tan. <laughs> <laughs> Anka Jams. Anka Jams. I don't know Anka if you know. Anka Jams. A tan tan. Tan tan. Oh, God. All right. No. I had a match with the girl on Tan Tan. It's a rather popular dating app. From what I found, it looks like it might be a dating app in an Asian country. Oh, okay. more okay. popular there. Mm-hmm. Um, the first month of our convos, everything seemed generally fine and until, until our first meetup. Having been ghosted several times on the app, I was delighted that this girl continued the chats and we made progress moving from dating app to WhatsApp. Our chats were pretty normal and she told me that she was working as a part-time private tutor. This raised some red flags as she told me she only worked as a tutor and nothing else. We can I don't know why that was a red flag uh, yeah, necessarily, but yeah, like okay. We continued chatting normally for about a month before I asked her out for lunch. The meetup was rather awkward and dry, and it felt like a Q&A session between the both of us. She kept checking her phone and didn't really initiate in the conversation, and it was clearly in, uninterested in me. Suddenly, she asked me whether I knew about Amway and my thoughts oh, about no. their products. Oh, no. And wow, she suddenly came to life <laughs> and started talking about how great their products were. Can you imagine? Just like, mm-hmm, yeah, great. But have you heard of Amway. Let yeah. me tell you, they have an amazing skincare line. Like, just what? Oh, oh my gosh. It's the worst. <laughs> I, I've gotten trapped into those conversations. So, as much as I'm like, man, I wish that I was that person that's like, no, thank you. Please fucking stop. I am not. I'm have not that ever person. Been, this guy. You know, they always like make jokes about how you get messaged by people you used to know and they're like, Hey girl. And you're yes. about to be sold an MLM, right? Yes. Like, has that ever happened to you where you genuinely like at first thought that this was someone who wanted to reconnect with you? Like yes. that, that happened to me. Yes. I got and fooled. I was so like, disappointed me like, too. I was like oh like this was a friend that i used to have yeah. we you know had run into each other back home and we were you know like yeah, in passing. and i was like oh like how nice and so when uh-huh. she messaged me on instagram i was like oh my old friend mm-hmm. and so i was like oh this is so nice and then we were like Definitely. chatting for a second and then she looped me in she's oh, like have you ever tried no. this lipstick stuff uh-huh. it's lip sense you're yeah. gonna love it. it like you have to peel it off with a sandblaster but it's i was hurt forever <laughs> i was hurt i was like oh yeah. I thought you really wanted to be my friend. And she's like, no, I just want your lips to be stained for life. <laughs> All right. Uh, how great the products are. Try to get me to join the biz program. <laughs> my brain wasn't clicking at the time, so I just listened to her. <laughs> and after the first meetup, I would just continue to text her. And yes, she didn't really talk about Amway until I told her I'm doing online business. From there, she started to persuade me to join Amway and initiated the second meetup. Back then, I was rather curious about Amway and wasn't really up against or against it. So I went during the oh, second meetup. Baby. She explained to me the biz plans oh, and God. reasons for joining Amway. And straight away, she opened up the application form for me to fill out and to get enrolled right away. I told her I would consider and may apply later, but did not agree to join immediately. 
Subsequently, she kept checking and pestering me on whether I had already joined as an Amway business owner. Oh, okay. And even offered to let me use her credit card to, for the sign up. Ooh, I could sense honey. that she was rather desperate yes. to look for new clients and occasionally pestering me to start my business when I had signed up. What got me most disappointed <laughs> was that when she offered to help me buy items from Amway under her, my name and then pass them to me on a separate meetup how helpful but to my horror she had secretly used my ten dollar discount voucher for her own items without telling me and i only found out when i checked the invoice off after not being able to find that voucher i questioned her about it and said that she had oh and she said that once uh, she had used it and there was another voucher available she what? Just what? I'm so confused. Me too. I'm just like, <laughs> she's like, oh my God. So basically he's like, she's like, if you join up, you also get this $10 voucher. He went to go use it. She had already she used, had it used it for her stuff. Anyway. God, get it together, lady. To what get, is she doing? Just as I thought that she wouldn't do it again, she misused my ABO account to make another purchase for herself recently. But I didn't bother to ask for any more. Clearly, she was on Tantan just to court new prospective clients and not find potential partners. So, so he did he sign did up. It. He did yeah. it. He signed, signed up, up for, for Amway. Amway. Yes. Oh my god! He did this whole thing just. <laughs> Honey. Wow! Wow! Oh God! Yikes! Yikes! Oh no! MLMs on on dating apps. Dating's Awful. hard enough as it is. I know. We don't need to add that whole and no. that disappointment once again. It's it. like, yeah, if you really think someone's interested in you, and then you find out that they're just using you for their MLM. I mean, imagine you went on one date. You're like, okay. I mean, I'm not against Amway, so sure, let's. I'll do it. Sounds yeah, fine. Why not? This poor guy. And she keeps he using his just, account. <laughs> he just got so. She's played. like inventing Anna. She's like the transfers. <laughs> it's 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 coming. The, the transfer. money. The, the money, money is coming. It's in the bank. Something's wrong with the bank. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> well, do I have a tainted love story for you? I'm guys. excited because you are excited. Yes, I have been on the rabbit hole uh, for a lot of random cases lately and this one is also one so um i do believe that you guys have probably heard about it or seen about it because it's been on all the major platforms okay 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 okay. but i've got your 2020s your date lines Mm -hmm. your 48 hours so i got most of my information from murderpedia um there's a ranker article by kat mcauliffe and uh the snapped podcast and this is the tainted love story of Sheila Davalu. Okay. Mm. Okay. The name sounds familiar. Yes. Sheila Davalu was born in 1969 in Iran to a prosperous family. <laughs> 69. Now, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the late 70s, as revolution gripped the country, they immigrated to New York where Sheila flourished. She attended Stony Brook and earned a degree in biochemistry. Nice. And her parents were both like research scientists and stuff. So she was like incredibly intelligent. Um, however, when she was 19, she got married. And in later interviews, she would describe it as being somewhat of an arranged marriage as he was Iranian as well. Mm-hmm. She doesn't say anything was wrong with it. It was just like they were young and she was still pursuing her, you know, degree, all kinds of stuff. She like was hungry to get education and a great job and all of that. So she began attending graduate school at New York Medical College when that is where she met Paul Christos and began an affair with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Paul, for his sake, did not know she was married for a long time. And when he did find out, he put a stop to things until divorce proceedings began. Now this is a power couple because Paul is also like a hustler, super educated, gathering those degrees, nice. masters, grad school, doctorates, like all that stuff. She's doing the same. She ends up getting this like great job at uh, Purdue Pharma and they're making so much money. They have a condo in Pleasantville, New York. Like they're, yeah. they're making it. Life they're is doing pleasant. the things. Life is pleasant in Pleasantville. Um, <laughs> So they date for like eight years before getting married. This is like the year 2000. Oh, wow. So things are great. Now, there were just a couple little hiccups. Mm. (laughs) This 
For one, Sheila had a brother with schizophrenia Mm. that she said could not be told that she was married or he would get violent and upset. Uh. So anytime he was going to come over, Sheila would make Paul pack all of his belongings, clothes, photos, I mean everything, and he'd have to move out for the weekend. This feels sus. Sus AF. Yeah. I mm-hmm. asked Eric, Suspish. I was like, what would you do? Like if I was literally no. like, you have to move out for the weekend because my my brother's coming into town and he can't know that we're like that I'm seeing somebody. So you have to move out. Like no. all your stuff. And Paul, like a testament to this guy was totally easygoing about it and did it for years. Like no. I, on the regular would move no. out of his fucking house. For the weekend. Huh. Not a red flag at all. Yeah, that's a not nary a nary a red flag. Like, in sight. OK, your brother can't know that you're married, but you he, you can't meet him. Like, that's exactly. weird. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. no. Like you, you don't want to go. You can't go get lunch or something like, hey, this never is my questions it. Nothing like so like moves out on the regular right. on weekends. So that weird, her, but OK, her brother could could visit. So, yeah. Um. So this happened like once a month for years and once a month, yeah. once a month, like your brother is coming into town once a month on the weekend. I feel like yep. this isn't your brother. I'm going to say it. I mean, <laughs> feels it's, like, feels, feels like, like maybe you didn't get a divorce is what this feels like. <laughs> so <laughs> also they are not spending a lot of time together, not just with the weekends where she makes him move out. Like they're both like, she has a full-time job now as like a, a big scientist at Purdue Pharma, which also Purdue Ooh, Pharma. I know. Like, yeah. I'm like, mm, thumbs down on that. But regardless, she's working all the time. She's hanging out with work friends, that sort of thing. He's still like working and doing his own stuff. He's working in New York. Like, so he's commuting. There's a lot of stuff happening. They're not seeing each other. So the marriage starts to like deteriorate with their busy schedules. It, it almost starts to feel like a roommate situation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, the passion. The passion is not being kept up. Um, and when they did talk, Sheila would regale Paul with stories about workplace drama. Her favorite being this crazy love triangle between Annalisa, Jack, and her good friend, Melissa. Mm-hmm. That sounds, mm-hmm. <laughs> sounds sus. <laughs> Sheila would ask Paul's opinion on what Melissa should do, what he thought, etc., she even borrowed night vision binoculars oh. from Paul to go stake out Annalisa's condo with Melissa what? in no. order to catch Wait. Jack cheating. No. Huh. no. Okay. No. This, <laughs> Paul seems like the most tolerant, like to a fault. Like, what are you doing? And like, she's just like, Paul, can I borrow your night vision goggles? Yeah. Yeah. And literally, like, he watches her, like, she buys a lock pick what? kit what? and starts yeah. learning how to... How to pick locks in the house. You know, it's no, just a little it's, hobby. It's a little hobby. And she's just trying to help her good friend, Melissa, because Jack is cheating on Melissa with Annalisa and like it's this whole big thing. And she's uh, just being a good friend. So can I please have the night vision binoculars? And also, can you move out next weekend? Because my brother's coming no. to town. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> I'm like, I, yeah. Whoa. So now on March 23rd, 2003 Sheila tells Paul she liked to play a game with him it's a workplace game no it's a game she learned at work it's so fun Mm -mm. so what you do is you sit down in a chair and I blindfold you and handcuff you to said chair you learned this at work yeah really (laughs) sorry I feel like HR needs to be called (laughs) I'm sorry Ooh. I don't think you should. I what are they doing it. at Purdue yeah. Pharma? I have questions. They're just in the break room, all I'm blindfolded, sorry. blindfolded, and handcuffed to the chair. I feel like that would not go over at my workplace. I'm <laughs> just saying. Me say neither. It. Nor would I want it to. No, like, no. I'm sorry. And we're not even done yet. The next part of the game is you have your coworkers rub random objects on you, and you have to guess <laughs> what the object is. There- and look, there is nothing I would want to do less with my coworkers. Handcuffed. Like, handcuffed. <laughs> Why do you have to be Why handcuffed? Why do I have to be handcuffed for this? All, yeah. Why are you rubbing shit on me? <laughs> what is happening? Look, no, no. It no. is a very well-known no. workplace game. I, 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 
no. I can't. I cannot no. stop thinking about my bosses no. and no. how I would not no. want that to happen. No. I don't think my that bosses also. want that to happen. My <laughs> bosses would be like, absolutely fucking loony. Nobody not. wants this to happen. Nobody wants this to happen. And I'm like, Paul. What? Let's, let's, Paul let's is like. Yeah, I hope let's, I have coworkers play listening this to this episode because I am dying right now. I am dying. I'm also like Ugh. Paul has got to be the sweetest baby angel. Is this his first time being a human, or it's what his world first does go he around for sure? Like, live in where he's like, me. yeah, this he's is a brand acceptable. new soul, brand new, absolutely, like, just wow. uh, completely Listen. untouched by sin or something that he doesn't even think. My wife is cheating on me, and that's why she makes me move out <laughs> once a month. What is going on here? This guy is the most trusting guy. So he's like, "Yeah, that sounds fun. I want to do that. What? Let's try." Also, this. look, what am I? What out, am I rubbing on you? Even outside of it being super fucking weird, also doesn't sound like a fun game. No, like yeah. what is fun about this game? I gotta guess objects that are being rubbed on my face. Like I, this doesn't sound like fun to me. Yeah, and like they I- made sure like everything I looked at on this game by the way because i was like is this supposed to be a sex game no it's not Wait, it's not what? they literally made it like everyone made it clear this was not a sexual game this was legitimately like a work wait, game wait no. they did this at- what wait i'm sorry wait wait wait, no. <laughs> wait. i don't know Time if they out. actually did it at Port- purdue farm okay which am i but you're saying this is a real no i'm what i'm saying is that they made sure to say like everyone says Paul says it. Sheila says it. They were like, this was not a sexual thing. Because I was like, maybe it's a sex thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're just trying to, you know, like cover up the fact that they were like kinky or whatever. But they were like, no, like we... This, this was, was just for this, fun, like that, just for funsies. They make like Monopoly exists. Like you don't <laughs> have to do this. What play charades or something like a normal person? Like what's happening oh right now? God. There are I have, so many games that already exist that don't involve me needing to be handcuffed <laughs> to anything. I'm like, I kind of want to play the game. <laughs> well, oh, you know, we're getting no. together tonight with some friends. We could. We could no, play we this game. A good night, so yeah. Well, here we go. This is the the fun Sheila Davalu <laughs> game where she blindfolds him. So the first thing she does is uh, rubs a remote control on his face what? so it's no. like oh. okay um <laughs> i you're gonna make me break out too. i know like, don't i'm like, random objects on my face on please. my face no yeah i'm not not okay with that so you know he guesses the remote great so what is item number two um well he gets that clue by feeling a very large thump on his chest um, that's what he describes it's like a thump and it's like it's sharp it like hurts or whatever mm. and then mm. another did he get knifed in his chest that's mm. i guess it's a knife <laughs> i'm guessing so he's like he's your hurt. turn he cries out and she's like oh no it's an accident uh what <laughs> wait what i hope it's that inflection too like that uh, that oh, level no. Of, oh no <laughs> it's an accident so paul's like bleeding and he's like um okay like game game's over now i don't i don't like this game i don't want to play anymore like call call 911 i i'm hurt he doesn't know what's happening he's confused disoriented because he has the blindfold on and the handcuffs she's like i can't find the the key or whatever he's like get me out of this fucking chair please call 911 so it takes her a while she's like i can't find the key she's like stalling around this is also a terrible plan can i just say that as well i'm like you are a Honey, smart we, person we haven't even gotten to the end of it the the oh, uh, the no. the amount of like what was your plan that i kept asking like how how did you think this you was think gonna this turn was gonna out? work yeah anyways so she like stalls finally she like gets him uncuffed and then he's like please call 911 she like calls them and she's like oh they're really busy they said it might be a while before the the ambulance comes so no. they wait for like over a half an hour, he's no. like, "Can you call nine one one back and see if they're coming? Because I'm really hurt. I'm bleeding a lot. Like, what is going on?" And so she's like, "Oh, I can go to the urgent care that's like down the street." So she like leaves. <gasps> oh, she ma'am. leaves to go to the urgent ma'am. care, and it's like she she set, comes back with like comes, an iced coffee from Starbucks. She's like, <laughs> "They were just exactly. so busy. They're so." That's what she said. She's like, "They're busy there too." So they just said to wait on the ambulance. He's like take me to the hospital the ambulance is not coming you take me to the hospital she's, she's like okay i'd be like give me the phone yeah give me the phone because i can have these conversations with you so you know i can clearly talk so give right. me the phone 
So she, they get into the car. He doesn't have his hands. She can hold it. Hold it up to the ear. They're going to the hospital and they're like, get to the emergency room. And she keeps driving. He's like, uh, (laughs) you know, it's right there. So she like turns into this like parking lot. That's kind of like the employee parking lot or whatever, like in the back in the furthest in the (laughs) spot. spot. And so they're like sitting there and he's like, uh, like, get me, get me help. And she's like, oh, oh, and like stabs him again. What? In her car? What? She's what? like, it's an accident. It's uh, an accident. Stabs him what again in the car. And he's like, ah, or whatever. And there's like employees who are like, what the fuck? That girl just stabbed that dude in the car. What? And, and so they're like, they're like 911, like immediately. Like, <laughs> let's get help. This guy's getting stabbed. And she like literally like opens the door and like pushes him, what? gets him out the door. But what? then she sees that people saw that stuff. So she's like, oh, oops, maybe I ought to get him back in the car. So she's Paul? like trying to get Paul like back in the car Paul's so she like, can get no, away. Get away Just from me. Comedy of errors. Just oh, calamity. I know. It's like, burn, nang, 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 nang. <laughs> like the Benny Hill. Of oh, fucking my God. Crimes. So. The the cops like come yeah. and an ambulance comes and they're like, okay, what the f is going on? Let's get Paul. Like, so he's been, <laughs> he's been stabbed, stabbed with a times. small paring knife, but it still nicked his heart. So he oh, had to go into open heart my surgery. God, and she's like, he he came home. It must have happened at work because okay. he came home and he laid on the gla- ground and he was bleeding and he asked me if I was okay. What what? <laughs> We just saw you stab him, you dumb bitch. <laughs> yeah, and he was still conscious. So cops were like, hey, who fucking stabbed you, bro? And they were like, he was like, she did. She fucking stabbed me. Like thrice. Three times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once, twice, thrice stabbed. So she's like in the cop thing. And they're like, yeah, we know that's not what happened. He did not get stabbed at work and then drive home and then lay on the ground. Like, what is going on? So then she's like, and he fucking said you stabbed him. And so then she's like, "Is an accident. We were playing this game. Like he, he did you jerked. accidentally stab him in the car in the parking lot just now? <laughs> exactly. She said, she said it was all, all an accident. And if I really wanted to kill him, I'd have used a bigger knife. Okay. And he, he thrust himself into the knife. Oh, three times. What? He ran into my knife. Okay. okay. Exactly. Okay. So cops are like, this is baffling. So we, need to investigate this. Who are these people? What is going on? Why did this successful cup like what game is this? First of all, is this a common workplace game? What in the fuck? What in the fuck? <laughs> so the first thing they do is they look at Sheila's phone. The first thing they do is call Purdue Pharma and they're like, what kind of fucking foolish <laughs> what games kind of are you, guys are you running over there? Yeah, I know. Well, a place that causes the opiate crisis. Well, but well, anyways, anyway, I mean, <laughs> anyway. Oh, for just that little thing. No big deal. <laughs> um, so the first thing they do is they look at her phone and they notice she never fucking called 911. So they're like, Duh. okay, so yeah, you weren't trying to get them help, but they, they see that she called um, a bro named Nelson. So mm. they're like, I am so confused. I'm so confused. Cause I'm just like, if you, Oh, you said 911. I thought you said Nelson. Nun, nun. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That's who I called. I called yeah. Nelson. Nun, nun. Uh-huh. And so they're like, the cops are like, yo, Nelson, like, can you come down here? We need to, we need to talk to you. And they're like, why did a woman named Sheila Davalu call you? And he's like, oh, we hook up from time to time. Huh. On the weekends. On the weekends, usually. Huh. <laughs> Once a month on the weekends. And huh. he's like, that's really weird. And they're like, do you know, like, she just, like, stabbed her husband or whatever? And he's like, yeah, no, she's not married. <laughs> I didn't know she was married. Oh, my God. And he's like, and did you say that he he was stabbed because my fiance was just stabbed a couple what? Of months ago? <gasps> what? What? I do not remember what? this story. What? Mm-hmm. So detectives are like, mm, you said what? Uh, okay, your fiance got stabbed. Also, wait, so, you have a fiance? Back in November <laughs> of two thousand two, Annalisa Ramundo was at home in her condo or whatever. She had the day off of work. She was supposed to start this new job. Nelson was at work at Purdue Pharma. She used to work there with him along with, you guessed it, Sheila Davalu. They all worked at Purdue Pharma together. 
Nelson, very gregarious, super fun, uh-huh. popular guy at work. Uh-huh. And he was very popular with the ladies. Uh-huh. And so he had been fucking Miss Davalu, but also he was getting serious with Annalisa. Now things were getting so serious that they decided to get engaged. And at that point, according to Nelson, he stopped fucking Sheila Davalu. Hmm. Uh-huh. Sheila said their relationship never stopped. But it comes to mention that a month after he kind of cut things off with Sheila, Annalisa is stabbed to death in her oh condo. Oh my God, to Shit death. to death. To death in her condo. Now, Nelson was the very first suspect because they're like, it's your yeah. fiance. Also, he w- didn't seem that broken up about it. He just Ugh. like, and so they're like, this isn't a good look, bro. Like, he was Ugh. the main suspect. So like, where were you today? He was working all day at Purdue Pharma. Like, you have to punch in, punch yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. There's constant camera supervision. So he was at work the entire time. The only clue they have about this killing is the fact that there was a 911 call where a woman says, you need to come. My neighbor is being attacked by a man. So they're like, this is all we have to go on. They play this this 911 call to like all their different suspects that they have and everything. No one can figure it out. They go knock on apartments like, hey, were you the neighbor that called? Blah, blah, blah. Well, finally, they trace that 911 call hmm. and it comes from like a, a pay phone, like almost a mile away. So they're like, why would a neighbor, if they're mm-hmm. seeing a woman being attacked, leave their house mm-hmm. and go a mile away and call on the pay phone and not? So they're like, this is really weird. So that's all they've had to go on for this case for a few months. They didn't go interview the neighbors, though? Like, I feel like... No, they did. They, they did. They interviewed they the neighbors. Find. They couldn't find yeah, the person. Okay, there we go. No one saw anything. So that was the only clue that they had. They did have blood and everything like that that they went and went for testing. But, you know, that takes a long time. So a few months, they're still, like, all shoulders on this murder. So now, when they're looking into Sheila Davalu attempting to kill <laughs> her, her husband... They're talking to this Nelson and they're like, oh, wait, you were dating both both people. Hmm. Interesting. 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 So they ask Sheila about it. She's like, nope, nope. I was at work. And they were like, yeah, but we can see that you took a two hour break (laughs) that day. And she's like, yeah, I go home for lunch. You know, I'm like really stressed. I just I go home for lunch and, you know, so I just sit there for a couple hours and I just just sit there. That's a great alibi i just sit there at home alone (laughs) they play her the 911 call she's like "Mm, yeah that's not me and they're like we're listening to you talk you and we this is this is you i can hear your this is you (laughs) i can hear your voice so she she says no no that's not me like all shoulders i'm not talking anymore also i'm gonna be representing myself oh (laughs) here we go great okay so paul luckily survives the ordeal um, so that's trial number one, <sighs> the attempted murder of Paul Christos. And so he has to go and testify and be questioned yeah. by the person that attacked him. Oh, my God. His ex-wife. Well, not ex yet. They were in the process of getting divorced. But I should hope so. This newborn soul is like, <laughs> she shouldn't be in prison. Like, she oh. should get help. You know, like this baby, baby angel. And she, meanwhile, is like gaslighting him, doing all the things. And he's being like so understanding is like, I don't know what happened. Like, you know, I mean, like, I okay, I understand that you should be able to represent yourself in court. I think it is very. That is really fucked up to be able to. Mm hmm. To yeah. question the people that you yeah. attacked. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only that, the reason why she said, and this is why the Snapped podcast was actually really inter- interesting because it it's two parts. She's like the only one that's ever had multiple Snapped episodes. Um, they interview her. Oh. And so the whole time, like you do get to hear her side of the story. And what's funny is like you hear her voice and you hear the 911 call <laughs> and you're like, bitch, that's fucking that, you. That's you. That's you. That, that's you. But the whole time she's like, denying it and she's saying the even whole thing in the snapped interview she's even in the saying snapped she interview it. she's saying she's saying it was a complete accident well, and well, like it okay. got blown out of proportion it was just a game and he lunged into the knife 
Okay, and she was but, just confused. But what about the time in the parking lot? Yeah, she was like, I don't know. I don't really remember. What about the fact that you didn't call 911 when yeah. you told him that you did? She says she called Nelson. Okay. Because he was supposed to come over that night and she was calling him to say, don't come over. She was canceling her plans. She was canceling plans. Oh, okay. got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. But what about the 911? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, no. What about driving past the emergency room? What about yeah. stabbing him in the parking lot? Because it reads to me like you were stalling, hoping that he would bleed out yeah. and die. Yeah. The delusion. But even here. if he did. What the fuck are you going to do about that? Well, and I'm just like, if you've killed somebody already, if you right. wanted to kill him, why didn't you just do it? Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, why wouldn't you? I mean, just, I'm glad you didn't. I just no, me I too. Just but I'm just it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I'm like, if correct. You, you already stabbed him a couple of times. Well, that's but, what the third one was for in the parking lot. But why even take him to the hospital? It's just, it's so, like, the whole thing, the whole is, thing so is so weird. weird. It's so weird. weird. And I just don't understand, like, what her end game was. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay, exactly. he does die. Then what? Yeah, then what? Then what? Exactly. So she's, like, questioning. The judge is not buying it at all. And the judge is like, I'm going to give you the maximum sentence. Yeah. It's 25 years. I'm like, that's... A lot, actually. For attempted? A, attempted yeah. murder or whatever. Yeah. So she gets 25 years right off the bat. Good. Now, meanwhile, they've been building all of the case against her for the murder of Annalisa Raimondo. And they're like, they got um, a sink handle back that had her DNA on it. They were able to match from her, from from her, her house. washing washing her hands at Annalisa's house. Okay. So they have that. Um, they have uh, the, like, a expert voice person saying this is a match the mm-hmm. 911 call like all of that she represents herself again calling nelson on the stage paul back up on the stage the whole thing is like a circus however that's why you keep saying stage yeah because you're like this is a back circus up on it is stage. it's a circus and yeah. she, her main thing was she's like i'm representing myself so that you can hear my voice and if that really was me on the 911 call why would I let you hear my voice? Why would I represent myself? So I must be because innocent. you think that people are stupid or something. Yeah, like you what? are really delusional, lady. Really? Yeah, she must think she's like so so clever. And like once the jury hears like all of these things that she basically made this dude move out, like <laughs> this whole convoluted thing about making up a workplace love triangle that was actually her. Like she's <laughs> Melissa, and this fucking. <laughs> I'm sorry. This game. This game. Yeah, exactly. It's the the most insane part of the whole thing where I'm just like, I just don't understand how you thought you were going to get away with this. And not only that, they actually think that the reason why she invented this game and hurt Paul to begin with, the prosecutor was saying, is because she had talked so much about that workplace triangle, but she hadn't changed Annalise's name that when Annalisa got murdered, it was news in the area. Yeah. And so he saw it on the news and he was like, oh, do you know anything about this? Like, is she okay? Not like accusing her of being involved, but in her mind, she thought, oh, I can't leave him now because what if it gets connected and he goes to the cops about it? But I'm like, honey, Dude. your husband moved out once a month for years for you to carry on an affair. I doubt he's connecting any motherfucking dots. Right. Yeah. I mean, and to be honest, Paul <laughs> sounds a little like you could just be like, hey, I'm going to have an affair. And he'd be like, all right. No, like, <laughs> That's he, fine. He really, I mean, I don't really want to. I don't chill. like it. Yeah, but, it's yeah. not my favorite, but you know, that's, that's OK. I'll all keep right. I'll keep fucking off once a month <laughs> to the hotel. It's OK. Yeah. So that's like that was her thing it's like he she couldn't have him go to the cops so she's like i guess i have to kill him but in the most convoluted of ways so she does get found guilty and she gets 50 years on top of that 25 so it has to be served what is that consecutively or whatever so Mm -hmm. she's almost done serving the 25 years and then she'll get transferred to connecticut not the not concurrently so yeah so yeah. 25 and then 50 so 75 total yeah oh, she will it. she will not i think she's first eligible for parole in like 2079 and by that point like she's well into her 80s and that sort of thing so she effectively got a life sentence for these crimes now twist ending they're actually looking at her for a possible <gasps> third what? murder Ooh, do tell now it's it doesn't seem 
uh, they don't have anything else on it left. But coincidentally, yet another female coworker was stabbed to death hmm. that she worked with. And it's in like the same way as like Annalisa and they both work together. So they're looking into it right now. And she wow. did have a date in her calendar right before she was going to be killed. And it says Nelson on it. And so they were like, is this the same fucking Nelson? Like, no way. It's a look. It's not. It was a band named Nelson that she oh. was a fan of. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, we know Nelson. Yeah, exactly. So because they they actually they found Nelson like he had since moved away and tried to move on. And he was like, I, I don't want to keep talking about this fucking bitch. But they were like, we got to know, like, were you dating this this other chick, too? And he's like, no, I don't know where. But so that's where that's at right now. They're they're asking her if she she killed yet another coworker. But Damn. That is the tainted love story of Sheila. Dabaloo. People like this Damn. are so fascinating to me. They really are. Because I'm just like, yeah, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Like, you what did not did map you this out well. What was going to happen? It's people that think that they're so fucking smart. Yeah. That think yeah. that they can just, they, I wonder what kind of childhood they had or if they were just like uh, so skilled at manipulating their parents that they thought that they would be able to manipulate other people. Just get when away they, with anything. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Because it makes me wonder, like, what her childhood was like if she just thought, "Oh, I can explain this away," and it's like, yeah, or she just makes no sense. No, yeah, she's got you a personality literally, people disorder. People watched you stab yeah. him in the parking lot. You are out of your gourd, bitch. Yeah, yeah. This the poor level dude, of delusion though, is... the level of delusion for Paul. He's yeah. like, okay, sure, sounds like a fun game Paul. that you pay at work. You sweet angel, honey, <laughs> that's, baby. That's the part. When I read that in that Ranker uh, article, I was like, oh, I'm, I have to do this just because I had to see your faces when I described <laughs> this game. It's a game. game. The, the, <laughs> and if we don't play it tonight, I'm going to be I, very oh disappointed. I mean, <laughs> L, we can record it and put it up on Patreon. We, play, we played the Sheila That's Dabble a remote, game. Bitch. It's a remote control. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. what do you win at the end of it oh. like i don't understand I did you put your dick on me <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ uh, oh, oh man God. Well. this is that is <laughs> wow that is a whole lot i can't believe you guys had never heard of that no, one it's on never. like I'd all heard the it, things i'd heard the names like both of those names yeah. rung a bell for me but I don't know. I would have remembered. Yeah. I heard the this details. Story. Are you kidding me? I would have fucking for sure remembered about this <laughs> motherfucking game. I am. I am so mad. I'm so mad. Yeah. And it I'm like going to go home. I'm going to go home after this right now. And I'm going to ask Chris. If, Rick, Rick, please record you I, asking Chris to play this game and tell him that you I play it at work. I this game at work. Yeah. I want to see his reaction. I actually haven't told Eric about this part of let's, the story too, so I, I could actually try to, let's to ask him we if he'd be okay with it. Eric's pretty easygoing. Eric is. Eric be like, "Sure, dude." <laughs> Sounds like Chris fun. would be like, "Wait, you play hey, this at work?" Anthony would be like, "Where did you get those like handcuffs?" <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that we're like Been describing keeping those. Chris would be me. Chris would immediately be like, "I'm sorry. Wait, what are you playing at fucking work?" Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? What? what? No, I'm saying just go up to me like I really want to play this game. No, I I can't get away. I would laugh immediately. <laughs> I'm the worst liar in the planet. First of all, second of all, I'm literally just gonna be like, let me tell you a story about this. If I had asked you this, what would you say? What are your thir- first thoughts? Yeah, no, I feel like we have to talk about it at our game 100%. night tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. literally just Oof. throw it out there. Be like, you guys, we have this great game, and see who would be down to play it. So I guarantee you, Mac and Mike would be like, okay, that Mike, sounds fun. Mike's in. Mike's, Mike's in, in already. 100. Mac has questions. Emerson's like, I'm in just for the sheer, like, I need to know where this goes. <laughs> yeah, Emerson is definitely going to put his dick, dick on, on your Mike. face. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, no. That, when I said that, it was Emerson in my mind that <laughs> at game night did but this. Wow. I'm just like, oh. Our friend, uh, yeah. by the way, every, every listener is like, what the we fuck We don't know who your friends are. Nobody yeah. knows who these people are. Ooh. Anyways, what are you guys watching this week? Well, I finally finished The Sopranos. Okay. I have 
feelings Uh about about that finale. The finale, the show in general, I had a real like love hate. Yeah. Like I couldn't tell if I really liked it or not, but I kept watching it. Mm -hmm. And then I liked like, you know, the performances are so good. I don't know. I have a lot of like weird feelings about that show about, you know, the way that that show went down. Um, Overall, I mean, I, I'm glad I've watched it. Now. Right. But having watched that, I was telling Anthony, I was like, you know, I think I just prefer like crime shows more like Breaking Bad or Ozark. So I was telling him, you know, like, oh, I need to get caught up on Ozark. And he'd never seen it. Oh. So I was like, OK, let's rewatch Ozark or I'll rewatch Ozark from the beginning to watch it through with you. And then we can watch the the end together because I haven't seen the latest season so we've been watching, I've been rewatching Ozark, nice. which mm. I it, think is such a good show. Hmm. I've never watched either of those shows. I mean, I watched bits and pieces of, of um, Sopranos. Sopranos here and there, but no, I was never like a devoted fan to it. Like it's not, the performances uh, are great in that show. Like that's what makes it is like Edie Falco and um, Edie Falco is a James queen. Gandolfini are like so good. Yeah. They're so good in it uh, that it's. It's a great to watch for that, but yeah. Um, I am watching. I actually watched two movies last night. Um, I shirked my responsibilities, did not do my homework, so now nice. I'm going to pay for that today. But I watched two movies, and I wait. So I watched the three five five, which okay. was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty decent. I love women kicking ass. Yeah. So that's that's always going to be a win for me. A good action movie, and it's chicks who are like kick ass and so i loved it i loved it because that's just my jam yeah yeah and Great. then i watched the adam project oh, which is with, new on netflix i saw the preview for it and it's i've heard good. mixed reviews about it so it's you liked it i literally listen i i never know what people like because i do not ever check out people's reviews on things but for me for what it was i thought it was cute i thought it was fun i thought it was a i mean it is what it is. It's the, kind of a sci-fi. The trailer was interesting to yeah. me. I was like, oh, okay. I also think, yeah, hating on people for liking something yeah. that you don't like or whatever. What just, just whatever. We're all stupid. different. Yeah. yeah, like different stuff. Exactly. I liked it. I thought it was enjoyable for what it was. Did I think it was like an, an Academy Award? No, it's, it's it was a fun movie. It, it is what it is. I it was definitely a family sci-fi fun thing. Here is the the thing that I want to bring up about this movie, and I think that we should we need to discuss. Us. And that is in this movie, this movie <laughs> supposes that shit, the Hulk, we just talked about him earlier. Oh, Mark Ruffalo mm-hmm. and um, Jennifer Garner are married. Uh-huh. And I have the question now is this part of the 13 going on 30 verse? Oh. Is this a continuation of the 13 going on 30 verse? And I, I would like to see that it is. Uh, I would like to. I, I agree. I have not seen this. this movie I have not seen this movie, um, but I'm going to say yes. yes. I'm going to. I'm just. I'm, I want it to happen. <laughs> yes. I want it to be so. Yeah. Uh, so, so yes. In my mind, this is after they got married. This right. is years later, them having a child. And this is. Yeah. So this is where. This is the next the chapter. Con- awesome. The continuation of the 13 going on 30 verse. I love that for them. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And for us. Yeah. 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 We deserve it. I am fixated in a probably unhealthy way on the show Severance. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> so good. To the point where I'm like reading subreddit fan theories, oh. all the things. I have the I cannot wait to get screenshots mm-hmm. of like the map of the office oh. and all of that, just trying to figure out and looking for clues because this week's last episode especially was bananas. And also John Turturro. Like everybody oh. does so good in this John show. John Turturro. Oh my gosh. So good. Him and Christopher Walken. Amazing. I'm like, oh, oh my God. Man. So every time, watch every time they're so together, good. I'm like, kiss. Kiss, kiss, kiss. kiss. Oh, kiss. And this, oh, <laughs> so good. Wait, I never thought I would be oh. cheering for this romance pairing, I know. but I love I know. it. I never thought I'd want to see it, but I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I definitely do. So is it scary? Do, no. Can I watch no. it? No, you yes. can watch it. Yes. It's psychological it. more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. History kind of. Yeah. It's more of like a, what the fuck is yeah. going on? In like a yellow jackets kind of way? Like a. Oh yeah. It's not even as, it's not gruesome or anything okay. like that. So if you dug mm. on yellow jackets, you'd Love. be just fine with severance. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, I, yes, it is. I might be God, It okay. is so interesting. And there's, it's weirdly funny. Like Dylan makes me laugh every 
episode. Adam in Scott? That. Uh, no, it's... He's it, the co-worker. He's the co-worker. With the Chinese finger traps. Yes. Oh he's hilarious. So funny. Yeah, he's just like working super hard because he wants to have like a... The waffle party. party. <laughs> waffle party. Oh my God. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys haven't watched it... um, uh, Nothing makes me want to go back into an office less though than yes. watching this show. I feel like it's I'm the like, right moment for something like mm, this to hit. Yeah. It's so interesting. So... Definitely can't recommend that enough. Go check it out. But if you guys have stuff that we should watch, read, check out. If you have stories, be they short or long, go to our one-stop shop of a website. It's myworstatepodcast.com. And we love you so much. Cheers. Cheers.